<laughs> okay, now, now let me just switch and take you to the other side of the world because you sent me some photographs of some elephant hunt that were absolutely amazing. And I understand they had a story to go along with them as well. Yes, they're each very interesting stories. The first is that 95 pounder that I sent you. Uh, this was killed by a hunter from Portugal hunting with uh, PH Cobus Callets of Johan Callet Safaris in their Okavango Delta area NG32. And they were scouting an island that's very thick with brush. And as they're walking along quietly scouting, they hear snoring. And it was this elephant asleep in the brush snoring. Uh, and that gave them the opportunity to check him out. Uh, the PH saw that he was a very good uh you had a very good tusk on one side, but the other side was broken off, yet they knew that that one tusk was going to be huge, and the hunter made the decision, and they went ahead and hunted that elephant, and you see the results there. Uh, another 95-pounder. Botswana's been producing some big elephant this month, uh, this year. Uh, you'll recall I, I sent you photographs earlier in the season of a 97-pounder that had been taken by, again, Johan Collitz. Uh, so there's some big elephant in, in Botswana coming down this year. Yeah, and, and for those of yeah, many of us who kind of assume that, you know, 50 and 60 pounders, are, which is probably the average elephant taken, um, but, but you very rarely have the opportunity of seeing anything larger than that. And, and, I'm, and you're absolutely right, Barbara. You have sent us photographs this year of more big tusks than I've ever seen in any previous season. So I don't know what that means exactly. Either there's some better hunting conditions or the hunters are just finding them. I mean, the picture we have here now is a huge elephant, a big boy, and he's standing there with uh, obviously the hunter and perhaps the guide. Uh, what took place there? Well, this was an elephant. He's 73 by 74 pounds. And he was taken in an area that was newly opened. Uh, this would be in CT7. The hunter was Jared Rand, who is the son of Jeff Rand, who operates Jeff Rand Safaris. Mm -hmm. And this area is about 2 million acres, and it stretches all the way from Huangi uh, Game Reserve on the Zimbabwe border uh, to the Ensai, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly, Ensai Pan Game Reserve. Uh, which also borders CT1, another concession that ran holds. This is the first time this concession has been hunted since Botswana reopened hunting. Uh, so this is significant. Um, they tell me that they, they hunted a small portion for a show that uh, Federal Ammunition sponsors called Dangerous Game. And in the three days of hunting... They saw a hundred bull elephant in a small area, and this was obviously the largest one that they'd seen to that point and decided to take. Uh, so this area is very promising. I'm not sure if Ran has any more openings, but anybody who's interested should check it out. Okay. Uh, and no. if he gets more permits next year, I would jump on them. This is a very promising concession. And, and I, I've got some paperwork here that tells a story of how these hunters were actually surprised a little bit? Um, you mean the, the Jeff Ran Safari or the next one in Nyasa? Well, I, I'm not, no, this is Mozambique. Mozambique, yes, in the Nyasa Reserve. All right. This was a 78 by 60 pound elephant. And he was shot by necessity uh, by one of my subscribers, Robert Keim. He was hunting with Kambako safaris in the Nyasa Reserve. And at the time, he and his party were hunting zebra. And the tracker noticed this elephant following them from about 70 yards back. So the PH, uh, Stuart Taylor, told everybody to move along quickly, not run, but to start moving, that they needed to get out of there. And the elephant picked up its, its pace and was coming at them about 25 miles an hour, I'm told, and just charged. Uh, he came in, they thought it was a false charge at first, and then those ears went back and that trunk went under, and he came full bore. Uh, the PH and the hunter were trying to walk backwards because they were trying to keep an eye on the elephant. The PH took a shot at him, uh, hit him in the head with a 458 Magnum, 
uh, twice, and the elephant kept coming. Uh, went right past the pH, coming for my subscriber, Mr. Kime. Uh, he fell down, tripping over a bush, barely got up in time, and shot this elephant at five yards. When the elephant fell, it almost fell on top of him. He had to move fast just to scramble out of the way, or it would kill him just by falling dead. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a story there. Uh, turns out he says that uh, one of the tusks had what appeared to be a uh, ball from a muzzle loader, and they suspect that this elephant had been the victim of uh, poachers who had shot at it before, and it decided it did not like people with guns and was going to do something about it. Yeah, uh, but the yeah. shooting was, was ju uh, uh, ruled as justified by the Nyasa Reserve authorities. Of course, the ivory is not importable to the United States, but wow, what a story this subscriber has for the rest of his life to tell his grandchildren about. <laughs> yeah, at the time, I don't think they were concerned about whether or not they could get it in the United States. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, no doubt about it. That's a pretty hard pounding situation. Uh, I know that I've come across elephant at a very close range. I've been fortunate enough that it was a false charge. We weren't even hunting elephant, but he was probably within 20, 25 yards of us and just stepped out of the bush right in front of us. And we all, mm. you know, it, uh, your heart gets to pounding, the guns go up, the, the <laughs> trackers are going the other way. <laughs> and you stand there and it's like eyeball to eyeball. Uh, you know, I've been very fortunate, but uh, I'll have to congratulate that man for having the sense to uh, recover and drop that elephant. And you're right, he'll have a story to tell the rest of his life. That, that, it's been a heck of a year for elephant. It has been. And, and also just to reemphasize, he was hunting zebra and this happened. I was riding up a little hill and almost got killed. So yep. what what we do, that's just to underscore what we do, let's all remember it is dangerous, uh, whether we're going somewhere remote or not, and we need to always be on our guard. Even when we're careful, these things can happen, and we need to be prepared to get ourselves out of that situation as quickly as possible. So yeah. now, well, everybody keep I know that in mind when you go out the field. Uh, Barbara, over previous shows, there have been a number of uh, accidents. I don't recall, possibly there were some fatalities this year, and maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that as the season closes, because I know that you'll probably get some reports. But I think all of us know who go to Africa that the moment you step into the bush, you need to be aware of what you're doing. And, and of course, I think that's part of the attraction also, is yeah. that it's not... It ain't deer hunting in Texas. <laughs> and it's and not mean, Disney, nice baby. <laughs> but uh, I'm just kidding you on it's that. It's the but real it, adventure. And yeah, it we, need to rem is. we need to remember that. It, 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 it absolutely is. Thank you, Barbara. I appreciate you coming on. So glad that uh, you were able to get yourself alleviated from that without any really serious injuries. Uh, but did you keep the neck brace? <laughs> no. You didn't? <laughs> that is a memento I do not need. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll see you again next week, I hope. Will do. We'll see you then. Take okay. care, everybody. Bye-bye.